worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here.
All right. Good morning, everybody. God bless you. Good to see everybody today. Welcome to another Sunday service at University Parkway Church of God. I'll be your host here for just a little bit. My name's Henry Schaefer. God bless everybody for tuning in this morning. It's good to see everybody here today. Y'all got to give me some thumbs up if my sound sounds right. It's been a while since I've been on here. Let's see who we got tuned in here. We got a few people tuned in. God bless everybody for tuning in this morning. <clears throat> Ernie Farron, Beatrice Hutto, Barbara West, God bless you all for tuning in. Iris Rose, if I miss anybody, don't get upset with me. I'm just scrolling through. Gino Johnson, Melinda Hernandez, I hope everybody's doing well today. I know we're not having church today at University Parkway because of uh, we had a, a COVID outbreak, uh, and we had a lot of people. I mean, there's a there's a lengthy list, and of course, uh, according to uh, not my guidelines, but according to the Church of God guidelines, which I'm subjugated to, is that um, take a break, let everybody get past that, and then we come on back. I think that's the wisest thing to do. Uh, so that's what we're doing for this week. I want to really take a moment here and thank Bill George for uh, all that he did in taking care of uh, things while I was uh, out sick. I, Sister Schaefer and I and our entire family, we had a, a COVID outbreak. Uh, I came down with COVID. Um, I can't remember how many Sundays ago, but I was we were very, very sick. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, we decided to take off a few weeks, let us recover, get over that and everything. And... Uh, you know, I'm still still recovering. If you you know, if you go, I know some there's I you know I, I really and I'm going to say it like I said, there's a, still a lot of people who don't believe any of this is real. But when you go to the CDC website, you go and you look at the 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 side effects of of this and the what it uh, it's uh, doesn't mean anything until you get it, and uh, after you get it, then you start realizing, boy, this is this has been a battle, and it is a battle. Uh, it's just, like someone said, it's just like a bad, bad flu. Yeah, it's like a bad flu, like a real, real bad flu. And, uh, and there's some people who die from the flu. There's people who've died from this as well. But uh, anyway, we we are on the recovery. Uh, I'm not 100% yet. I'm trying my best to uh, yeah, wind it, get very winded. You go look at some of those things, that's what it does. Um, I want to thank everybody for the prayers God bless you. Thank you for praying for us and all the other people. Thank you for who came by the house. And um, we had, uh, I know I had, we had a Donna. She came by and she did some flags all around our house. And uh, I told Sister Schaefer, I said, I know some people don't understand this here. I just told Sister Schaefer, I just need somebody to call something out. If there's something here, <clears throat> I want it out. Get this thing out in the name of Jesus. And then we'll take care of letting Jesus heal it. But if it's a spirit, it ain't going to get healed. And uh, so I think, thank you for coming and doing spiritual warfare for for us and over the church and all those who's been praying at the church. Man, it's just a blessing to have such great people like University Parkway who understand spiritual warfare and understands the significance of what we're going through uh, at this time anyway. So uh, with that, all that being said, man, we still got a lot of people on here. Melinda Hernandez, I know, I know that she's been going through some things. I uh, hope you don't mind me saying that on here. Marvin, God bless you all. <clears throat> and you are overcomers, amen? Uh, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Phyllis George is watching. I, again, Phyllis, while you're here, thank you, Brother Bill, for taking care of everything while I was gone. All those who went to church and did all the worship, Zach and all of you, God, God bless you all. Hattie, God bless you. Good to hear from you today. Good to see Gino Johnson on here as well. Pamela Morin. <clears throat> you hear, hear this in my voice and everything. It, and it's been, um, I don't know, three weeks or longer. But um, I can walk to the stop sign. I can walk down to the stop sign and back. I've done that. Try to do that every day. Uh, Deidre, Deidre Kirkland's watching. Kathy Weathers. Be good to see you, Kathy we we Harvey. God bless everybody. I say hello. David Jackson's watching. Yeah, so um, I want you to tune in tonight. I'm gonna do my best to try to do another one of the, uh, do another uh, program here tonight. You know, I don't know, seven ish, eight o'clock, something like that. Don't hold me to anything, but that's what we want to try to do here. And uh, and I'll give you some more information, some updates on some things that's that's going on and that's happening and that we want to do. So just tune in. Tonight, if you can, uh, in, in that. Uh, 
but I want you here. Here, what I want to talk to you not today about. Let me put it back up on the screen here. I'm gonna probably do a series here, and it's called the greatest stories in the Bible. And uh, I'm gonna be looking at. Oh, I see Cassie. She's tuned in as well. God bless you, Cassie, for tuning in. <clears throat> greatest stories in the Bible. I'm gonna do one today that's called uh, the prophet's disobedience. And, other, you know, and as I've started looking at a lot of these things here, you know, there's a lot of people who, um, I mean, they hear the stories in the Bible. They may know them or they may have skipped. Well, I didn't know that was in the Bible. Or they may have heard of that. So I'm going to take some time to really talk about greatest stories in the Bible. And we're going to pull some uh, nuggets, some good things out of there uh, from that. I'm, I could have preached this this morning. I mean, it doesn't matter if I stand up and preach and walk around or stand up. But uh, it's going to give you the same information uh, no matter what. Someone said, well, I like preaching a whole lot better. Well, just play this real fast and turn the music up. I mean, turn the sound up. Play it fast, turn the mute sound up, and it'll be just like I am standing up there preaching. <laughs> How about that, everybody? So let's pick it up here. We're going to be talking about um, the greatest stories in the Bible. It's going to be about the prophet's disobedience. Like I said, we're going to pick it up in First Kings. First Kings chapter 13. Now, let me give you some insight on 1 Kings chapter 13. 1 Kings chapter 13 deals with, 1 Kings chapter 13 deal with um, a prophet that is sent to uh, Jeroboam. And as this prophet is sent to Jeroboam, he has a very specific word that he is supposed to talk to him about. And he's supposed to share, share with him about now, when I look at this here, so let me, give you, let me give you some insight on this story here. So get your Bibles and go to 1 Kings chapter 13. Now, I've, I think I've blown this up big enough. That we're going to take the time to read it. We're going to talk about it because I want the story, the complete story to be told. You're going to find it in 1 Kings chapter 13 and verse 1. And let me just pray as we begin. Father, we love you. Thank you for today. Thank you for your blessings. And as we begin the word today, God, I pray that you would help us be effective. We bind the enemy in Jesus' name that would try to come against us. We thank you, God, for all the people who have tuned in, all those who are listening. I pray your blessings upon them. Help us to be successful and faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says amen. Now, here's a book. I've got this book from a long time ago. And, uh, it, and I was going through. It's the greatest stories of the Bible. And uh, matter of fact, uh, as I'm going through there, talking about the greatest stories of the Bible, I mean, they're Bible stories. That's just what they're, Bible stories. But the one I'm talking to you about today is not in the book because this is the one that the Lord's been putting in my mind for me to talk about uh, coming back to preach or whatever I was going to preach about or wherever, wherever, wherever I was going to be at. But this is here. I've been thinking about this for at least three weeks and uh, so let's just present this uh, as one of the greatest stories of the Bible because it is. It's kind of a nugget hidden in there. And this is a man of God, a prophet that is sent from Judah. He is sent from Judah to, to, to confront Jeroboam. Now, when we talk about this, 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 this story here, let me just give you some insight on it before we get ready to read it. Here, here's what's happened is that Solomon has died. And his kingdom has been turned over to his two sons, Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam is supposed to be the real king over Israel. But Jeroboam decides he's not going to submit to Rehoboam. So there's a split in the kingdom. Now what happens is that Jeroboam, he decides to take ten tribes of Israel with him, of the ten tribes, of uh, all of Israel, and uh, that's called the Northern Kingdom. What he does, <clears throat> he sets up a kingdom. It's called the Northern Kingdom of Israel, uh, not Judah, because remember, Rehoboam is over Judah, but Jeroboam takes the northern part, and what he decides to do, he decides to set up two altars, one in, one in Dan, the city of Dan, and one in Bethel. What he was afraid of, he was afraid of that if the people were to go to Jerusalem every year, that Rehoboam would start to take the people away from him. So because he's afraid of that kingdom, he decides to set everything up so that he can uh, 
Rachel put that. It's going to be First Kings chapter 13, 1 to 3. It's going to be all of it. It's going to be, we're going to talk about, uh, let's see how much of it is. <clears throat> we're going to go all the way down to th verse 34. So here's, here's the thing. So he decides to set it up, uh, altars up so that, and he sets priests up. That's offering sacrifices on these altars that are not supposed to be altered. And these priests that he's setting up are not priests of God, but they are just anybody who has enough money and they want to buy the priesthood, then they can offer up these sacrifices there. That's the background. God sends a prophet from Judah up to, up to Jeroboam, and he's going to prophesy to him. Now, we're talking about the prophet's disobedience, one of the greatest stories in the Bible. So let's look at it right here as we begin, and we're going to read it here. And here's what it says. So that's the background. Here we go. Now there dwelt an old prophet. Uh, verse 1. Let me get it to verse 1. I'm sorry. I was at it, verse 11. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now, Jeroboam is the king, the pseudo-king, pseudo and he is going to burn incense at the altar, which is not what God told. That's not, that's not their job. And he cried against the altar, this prophet, in the, in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Now, he's prophesying to an altar. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest. What's this here? He shall offer the priest of the high places that burn incense unto thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent. And ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Now, he's going to give them a sign right now. You know, I like preaching about signs. And it came to pass that when King Jeroboam heard the sayings of the man of God, now this is a true prophet here, watch this here, and had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which they say they're going to grab him, and put it forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it again unto him. So his hand is stuck out like this here, trying to grab the, pre, the, the, the prophet. The altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign that the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored unto him again and became as it was before. So here we see in the story, the king grabbed the prophet, and then all of a sudden the altar breaks open, the ashes pour out, and then all of a sudden this man's hand is, is stiff. He's frozen there. He can't move it. And then he prays at the prophet now because he sees this sign. He prays that his hand would be restored, and it is. And the king said unto the man of God, verse 7, Come home with me, now watch every word of this here, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Now look at verse 8 at the bottom of it. You'll see the colon there where it says, right at the colon, for it was char for the man uh, for it was charged me by the word of the Lord saying eat no bread nor drink water nor turn again by the same way that thou camest so he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel so here's the part of the story we stop at right here is that the king wanted to reward him wanted to get him on his good side so look at this you mean this is a miracle this is a sign and he says, here's, I want you to come to my house. I want to give you something to drink. I want to feed you. And the prophet says, no, I can't. Because the word of the Lord has told me not to even eat nor drink nor, 
Am I even to go back the way I came? Not to retrace the same steps, but go another way. Now watch this here in verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Now you have to take, now you got to think about this prophet here. Remember I'm telling you about the people who are in the northern kingdom. They are separated from God. They have a mixed religion. They are uh, rebels. They are people who have pulled away from the true God in the southern kingdom. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, verse 11, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which, now watch this here, the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also to their father. Now, I want to think about this here as we just go through it and we talk about it. What was the words that his sons brought to him and told him? He said, there's good, so let's, talk, let's talk, think about them a minute because you don't want to forget them. That's what a lot of people do. They forget the words that God speaks. So here's what they're going to tell them. First of all, they're going to say this here. There's going to be a, a child that's going to be raised up by the name of Josiah. And he's going to take the bones of the high priest and the priests, and he's going to burn them on this altar here and destroy everything. And he's, this is the sign. This altar here is going to burst open, break out. And also now, all of a sudden, they tell the story of the man's hand. So watch this here. And the sons came and told him the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they also to, to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said to his sons, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him an ass, and he rode thereon. And he went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. Now, what, and there's a lot we can say here. I don't think I'd have stopped until I got back home. I'm just letting you know. Why? Because I want a little meal of water and some food. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this, with thee in this place. For it was said unto me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt not eat bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I'm a prophet. Now, this is the old, the old prophet. He says, I'm an old, he says, I am a prophet also as you are. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back unto thee, unto thine house, that he may eat and drink water. Now, watch what it says here. But he lied to him. This prophet lied to him. The prophet lied to him. Isn't that something? Y'all don't think we have lying prophets in the land today? Well, let's just keep on here. So he went back with him and did eat. And there's a lot of people who want their They're prophets. There are a lot of prophets. A lot of prophets. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and they drank water. So he went back, he did it, verse 19, let's go ahead, go with it. And it came to pass as they sat at the table, now watch this here, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. This is the old man, came back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, said, thus saith the Lord. Now he's got a prophet that has lied to him. He has him in his home. He's eating his food, drinking his water. There in the cool of his house, and all of a sudden, and you know, you got to think about. It. He's thinking, okay, I've heard the word of the Lord, and I've seen the signs, and I've done what the word of the Lord's told me to do. And I got an old prophet said he's seen an an angel. Got an angel talk to him. I ain't never had no angel talk to me. You got to think about his prophet. I ain't never had no angel talk to me. Got the word of the Lord come to me. This guy had an angel. Uh, an angel appeared to him, and told him to come get me. Well, then it's got to be supersede everything that God's told me to do. So he goes to this prophet's house, and all of a sudden, verse 21, and he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, 
Thus saith the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place, for the which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, this is verse 22, if you're following along, and drink, because this is in your Bible, it's in, it's in our Bibles. Greatest stories ever told, one of the good nuggets. This is, man, this is a gem right here. <clears throat> and drink no water. But look what he says. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of the fathers. And it came to pass that after he had eaten bread. Now I want you to think about what his word said. Let's, let's just read his word here. He says, but camest back and has eaten and drunk water in, this, in the place. Of the which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Look what he says. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of the fathers. Now that's all he told him. He just says, You're not, you, not going to be buried in the sepulcher of your fathers. That's all he told him. No time frame. Doesn't know when. All he just knows is here. He's not going to be buried where he's planned to be buried at. That's what he's talking about. And it came to pass, verse 23, after he had eaten bread and he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, watch this here, man. This is a story here. A lion met him in the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. So here's what we got. <laughs> we got a lion who has attacked the prophet that's on a donkey, on an ass. The lion, he, now this prophet's laying there. He's been attacked. He's not been eaten. But this, this lion is sitting there, and the donkey's sitting there, and the man's laying there because he's been attacked, and he's dead. And his carcass was, and when he was gone, the lion met him in the way and slew him, verse 24. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, "It is the man of God, who was disobedient." Now, this is how this is this is the this is how he is known. This man is known to this prophet here, and of course, there's going to be other people that he's going to be known to by verse 26. Who was this? This is the man of God who was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Therefore, the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke unto him. And he said, by me, the old prophet that lied to him to get him to come back. And he spake to his son, saying, watch this here, saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found the carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass, and the lion had not eaten that carcass nor torn the ass. Lion was just sitting there. Now these lions, I want you to think about these lions. Lions are like five, six hundred pounds. Huge things. I mean, uh, ferocious lion. And the prophet took up the carcass of the man of God with a lion sitting there. Think about it. Reached over and got the man of God with the lion sitting there and his ass and laid it upon the ass, his ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and bury him. And they laid his carcass in his, watch this here, his own grave. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass, after he had buried the man, that he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. Verse 33, 1 Kings 13, 33. And after this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again the lowest of the people's priests. Watch this here. But he made again. 
Now, here, here, here as we finish this up here, let me, let me just talk to you a minute about Jeroboam. Jeroboam is a wicked king over the northern kingdom. Northern kingdom never had good kings. And now you have a prophet from Judah coming to tell you this is what's going to happen. And it still says in verse 13, 33, and this thing Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, though he had a man of God come and tell him what was going to happen, but made again of the lowest of the people priests in the high places. That means he took anybody who wanted to be a priest, whosoever would, whosoever would, he consecrated them, and he became one of the priests of the high places. Verse 34, and this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from the face of the earth. Now, that's the end of the story there, and then it moves on in verse 14 to, to another story here. Let's stay with the story here. Now, let me just tell you, let me give, give you some insight here. When we talk about this story here, Jeroboam, and what people don't understand that we have a a situation in Israel, we're talking about Judah and over Israel, to where kings have decided and they have split up. Now, here's the story. Remember what Solomon, when he turned his kingdom over to Rehoboam, and Rehoboam and the men tried to tell him, said, hey, listen, you need to rule with a soft hand. But Jeroboam listened to the young men of his uh, council, and he says, if you think my daddy had a chain around your neck. He says, wait until I put my foot on your neck. And what that did, it was such a, a strenuous time in that country and in that kingdom that that kingdom actually divided because of that. Now, in this kingdom division that took place because of the policies that was going to take place under Rehoboam, that there was a division that took place. Stay with the story here. In this northern kingdom, these people had fallen away from God, doing the things of God. So what they decided to do was that they were going to set up their own way of worship. They were going to set up their own priesthood. They were going to do the things that the way that they wanted to do it away from God so that people couldn't even come to the true worship of God. So God sends this prophet there to prophesy against him. And he does prophesy. Now let's talk about this here for a moment. This time frame between when Jeroboam and when Josiah would come is approximately 280 years that Jeroboam is, that, that this prophet is speaking to Jeroboam about an incident that's going to take place some 280 years, 300 years into the future. This was around 900 B.C., and now we're talking about Josiah coming on the scene around 600 B.C., so we're talking about a great period of time. He says, here's what's going to happen. God's going to raise up a man who's going to destroy the high places. Everyone that you've put in place and you've set in place, God's going to destroy it. You understand, Jeroboam? And this is the sign that's going to take place. Now, here's the story about this. So, so that, that happened. Josiah came on the scene. He, he tore down all the high places. It's a great story. Someday we're going to read that one when we get to that one as well. We're going to read it. But this one here is the disobedient prophet. Here's the thing, that God is speaking to people today, the importance of, of obedience. It's the, it's the importance of being obedient to God. You see, here is a great story to where we have signs and miracles that have happened by the word of the Lord. And God has, and God has spoken specifically to this man about what he wanted him to do. Maybe God has done that to you as well. This is exactly what he wants you to do. But all of a sudden, what happens is that you get hooked up. You get somebody says, Whoo, look at that. Look at that ministry they got over there. Look, look what's going on over there. Then all of a sudden, these people pull you into a ministry or pull you into a thing to where, look at it. I had an angel revelation. Look what he's told me to do. And he's told us to you to come to my house and Thus saith the Lord, come to my house. I mean, you got to think about it. This is the story of a true prophet, a true person who can hear God. And now we have, watch this here, we have a prophet that is the prophet of Bethel, of Dan, of the northern kingdom. And the Bible tells us he lied to him. 
and got him out of position with God and got him over here where he wanted him at so that all of a sudden when you, you know, the, the Deuteronomy 28 ta talks to us about being, if you are, will hearken into the voice of the Lord thy God, you will do what I tell you to do. You will get the blessings of God. But if you choose not to follow what God says, do I'm talking about down, I'm talking about down to the very minute thing. Don't eat, don't drink. I mean, this could be your fasting time. He could be talking about, he could be talking about your praying time. God could have told you things that he wanted you to do or not to do or go. And he says, don't even go back the way you came. When you walk this way, you pick you another route and go back home another way. That means you're not going to retrace your steps. That means to this people, he said, you're not going backwards. You're not going to go back down the old road that you came down, but you're going to move on with God. There's going to be a different path that you're going to take. Does that make, this is one of the greatest stories in the Bible. This is some good stuff here. When we're talking about, and it's rich, and it, it, it is rich with truth because it can, it can apply, look here, it can apply to leaders over a nation. Because when you look at the story setting it up, is that Rehoboam says, you're not going to like the policies I'm going to bring. And boy, there's a lot of policies coming that we ain't going to like. I'm just letting you know. And Jared Rehoboam said, you're not going to like these policies. If you think, you think his policies was bad, it's going to get tough, going to get rough. And all of a sudden, these people didn't, does not know what to do. So all of a sudden, they decided to divide, <coughs> and they're going to do this here. So there's a, on that end of it, you've got it. Then you have people that God is speaking to. And over the last, I'm going to say over the, well, just over my lifetime, I mean, God has spoken to me and told me a lot of things he wants me to do, how he wants me to do it, and he's also told me this is coming. And I'm not going to back up from anybody and say, well, you know, I'm really sorry. God didn't really tell me that. I'm, I'm, that's not happening. That's not happening. If God speaks it, I'm going to say it, and then this is, we'll see what happens. See here with Jeroboam? And you see this here with uh, Josiah that would come on the scene, you know, 300 years, 280 years if you look at it. I mean, if you look at the difference in what he's talking about, we're talking about a difference in time. I mean, it doesn't have to happen that day. The altar split open that day. The ashes poured out. The ashes that poured out of that altar that day were the ashes that were offered up the sacrifices for sins that were there by priest, and the king was getting ready to offer incense up. It was, everything was wrong. Nothing was bogus. Nothing was right. Nothing was sanctioned by God. Nothing sanctioned by God. And the man of God comes in and says, this is not of God. And then all of a sudden, the king says, come home with me. He said, no, I'm not going home with you. If I was going to go home with him or the old prophet, I'd have went home with the king. I could have got something from the king. You know, even if you give me half your kingdom or party, I'm not going home with but, and then all of a sudden, when this prophet, this old prophet, I want y'all to think about this here. Old prophet comes on the scene. I'm a man of God. Let me tell you what the angel of the Lord just told me. And everybody's looking for a revelation, aren't they? Woo. Pastor's preaching today, isn't he? Everybody wanting a revelation. They want a revelation. Oh, so let, let, let's go over there. There's one over there. Let's, let's go see what they got to say. And God said, God said, yeah, that ain't where you, you out of position. That ain't where you supposed to be at. Somebody shout Amen. You know he's preaching today, isn't he? So anyway, in the story here, I'm not, I don't know how long, I mean, how long have I been here? I don't want to go a whole long time, so y'all start thinking that he's, he's ready to go. So we're about 40 minutes into this thing here. <coughs> <coughs> so as we look at the story here, I want you to think about the greatest stories in the Bible. First Kings chapter 13, man, this is a story here. That if you've ever read one, you ever known what's taking place here, is that this prophecy and this story is awesome because it has uh, his prophecy, the proof that he's speaking the word. I mean, this altar cracked open, predicted just like it was going to happen. And a uh, hand paralyzed, restoration of the king's hand. Man, this story's got everything in it. It's got a line in it. Ain't it amazing how, watch this here, ain't this amazing how the the lion there was a lion i mean anything could have killed a man i mean but there is a lion l-i-o-n that attacks the man kills the man and just lays in there 
you know, he's from the tribe of Judah, this, this prophet. You know, it's represented by what? A lion. I mean, you know, so isn't it crazy that when you look at all the symbolism in here, is that, here's the thing, is that you can be, you can have all the signs, you can have the word of the Lord, but just be disobedient. God's saying just be disobedient to what God says, and look at what happens. Now, this story is not put in here for us just to read past, or many, some people have read it, but they've never really thought about it. But that God was very serious about following the word of the Lord that God gives and that God gives us. Maybe we need to get a lot more serious about it as well, what somebody says. <clears throat> somebody shout amen. Great story, isn't it? It's one that, get your Bible, read it. First Kings chapter 13. We're going to do more of these. I think we're just going to do, you know, because, um, you know, I don't know how people, I, I really don't know how people are in a lot of things. And I really know what, don't know if people ever think about the stories in the Bible and really think about how they affect the date. Now, I could get out of this story here in the time frame that America's in right now, with what has happened in our country, I could preach on this. And maybe that's the reason why God's put this in my mind here so much. Because a lot of this is where we're at. Thinking about the policies of Rehoboam. Huh? You need to read it. Rehoboam said, <laughs> when I become king, you ain't going to like it. You ain't going to like it. You think my dad was tough? You ain't going to like this. <clears throat> Somebody shout amen. The prophet's disobedience. It's going to be good. Tune in tonight. I'll give you some more insight on where we're at, what we're going to be doing, different things. We'll just get together and we'll talk tonight. How about that? For all those who are tuned in here, God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Read the Bible. Read the stories. Mark it up. I'm going to take these. And I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to put them on the radio. Because you know what I have found out? People just don't know the stories in the Bible and what they actually can mean for everybody. That makes sense? It's going to be good. I've been your host, Henry Schaefer. Let me pray over the church. Father, we love you. Thank you for your blessings today. Thank you for every person tuned in. I pray, God, that you will bless the people's homes. I come against COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. Has no authority over God, over God's people. Sickness was defeated at the cross. We claim healing in Jesus' name. You said, Lord, that the trials of our faith are more precious than gold. Lord, thank you for the trials of our faith. That brings a mature faith. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. Thank you, God, for all the people. Keep them safe. May they all be blessed in their homes. <clears throat> Set angels about every one of them. Lord, may every one of us who hear this word be obedient to what you say for us to do. Not turn to the left or nor turn to the right, but walk straight ahead. And Lord, we do not want to go back the way we came. We want to take another path this year. May we all take a path, Father. That would be pleasing to you. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do with this word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for your blessings over these people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everybody. I've been your host, Henry Schaefer. Woo! Somebody says, man, oh, man. I love the Bible. Somebody say, I love the Bible. It's going to be some good stuff. Greatest stories in the Bible. Greatest stories in the Bible. That's what I'm talking about. Read your Bible. It's going to be good. Let's get you one story. Look at it. God bless you, Hattie. Sister Melendez, Jeannie O'Berry. Rhonda Thiele, God bless. Oh, yeah, here we go. Lana Lester's watching. Donna Cheatham. Belinda Hamilton, God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in today.
time tonight. We're going to do about 7 o'clock tonight. How about that? We're going to shoot about 7 o'clock. We'll just do a program tonight. This is from Sister Schaefer here. Thank you all for all the prayers, all the food, running errands, walking around our house, praying, casting our demons or casting out demons, waving flags. Let me get it right here. Waving flags, <laughs> text messages, church signs, encouragement, bringing medical supplies, especially to the Holson Beck, men praying over the house, blowing me kisses through the windows. Ooh, I didn't know all that. Most of them taking care of God's church radio station. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sister Schaefer, she knows it all. She knows what's going on. Do what? No, they can't see your curlers in your hair. <laughs> All right, everybody, we love you very much. Thanks for tuning in today. Share this with everybody. God bless. See y'all tonight. Tune into the radio station. Hey, support the church. Tithes and offerings. Go to the website. Tithes and offerings. That's what keeps us going. Keeps electricity going, keeps paying the bills. God bless you. Go to the website. You can pay right there over how, how they got it all set up. I love you all very much. Share this with everybody. I'll tell you tonight some things I'm doing on Facebook. Doing some things on Facebook. Changing some things around. You know I'm broadcasting today just to University Parkway and the UpCog website. All right, you ready? Here we go. We out of here. God bless you all. Have a good day.